it's in everyone, you know, that, that fire and, and especially being Māori, it's just natural, you know, it's just in us to go to battle. I'm just the modern day version of my, my ancestors and my tūpuna, so when you see me in the cage, you see that fire in me. I'm just channeling everything my ancestors would have done. Oh! Right here. Dave Blackamoto here interviewing Kai Gara France before his big title fight eliminator in the flyweight division. All right, why fighting? What leads you here? Not everyone wakes up and decides I'm going to be a fighter. Yeah, I guess um, I guess I got to thank my bullies uh, back in high school. You know, I remember being that vulnerable um, 12, 13 year old, smallest in the class. Um, you know, I was always athletic, but um, I used to get picked on just because I was shy and timid and um, I guess I f they saw me as a target. So I used to get beaten up. Yeah, it's, it's one of these things where um, I guess if that never happened, I would have never walked into the gym because my parents wanted to install more confidence in myself and obviously learn some self-defense. And then I just stuck to it. I, it wasn't for anyone else though, this is the thing. If you're walking into the gym, if you're in there for the wrong reasons, you're not gonna last. But if you're in there for the right reasons, you know, just for yourself, not for the limelight, just there to, to better myself um, and just stuck at it. So I would never have thought, you know, looking back back then that this would be my job and I'll be one of the best fighters in the world. I'm gonna do that some dummy dummy shit, let them dump me on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just telling the future, you know. Welcome up, bro. <laughs> It's, it's in everyone, you know, that, that fire and, and especially being Māori, it's just natural, you know, it's just in us to, um, to go to battle and, and to, um, I'm just the modern day version of my, my ancestors and my tūpuna, so for me, you know, I embody that when fight week, you know, I really um, harness that support and, and love from back home and, and use it in the ring, so when, when you see me in the cage, you see that fire in me, um, I'm just channeling everything that, um, you know, my, my ancestors would have done. After high school, I was at uni, didn't know what I wanted to do. I told my parents that I wanted to drop out and chase a dream and you know they supported me 100%. So I, I brought a one-way ticket, moved to Thailand, did the tryouts at Tiger Muay Thai, ended up winning. I was one of five guys to get the scholarship and I think there was about 30 of us that were selected from around the world. What yeah. other names and what other notable fighters were you training with it? Or have you seen come through Tiger Muay Thai during your time there? Some of the biggest names in the UFC, Alex Volkanovski, he, he was one of my teammates when I was based at Tiger. Valentina Shevchenko was one of our teammates. Peter Yarm was one of my teammates. Like the caliber of fighters back then, we all kind of knew that this was the start of like something something beautiful. But yeah, just to see what they've done now and, and become UFC champions, it's like we already kind of knew this because that back then they were just a levels ahead and just to be in that room you knew something special was happening um, but we had so many UFC fighters coming through there uh, me, me and Brad were based there um, for the same amount of time Dan did a stint over there Dan Hooker um, so it was awesome to be a part of it you know got me out of my shell and forced me to meet new people so it was a great learning curve for me going overseas and, and um, you know fighting in Asia getting all this fight experience but then at that time I was coming off a big loss um, I remember I had spent three years in Thailand. Uh, I was coming off a three fight loo streak. My parents and, and some of my family were saying, maybe come back home, maybe this isn't uh, for you. You know, you can live at, live at home and, and go back to uni, you know, that's always gonna be there. Uh, but for me, you know, I got myself into this and I, I, I just wanted to kind of give it one more crack and say like, you know, if I put everything into this, um, at least I can live with no regret. So I just trained for four months. This is when I was fighting at Bantamweight. I dropped down to flyweight over that four months. And then um, I took a fight in Taiwan. Representing Auckland, New Zealand, fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai, Kai Kara France. And give everybody a clean fight. Okay, touch, touch the glove if you want. First punch I landed knocked him out, so it was a nine second fight. Um, I took a fight two weeks later on a cruise ship, I won by 12 second knockout. And then uh, in the space of a year, I got five first round knockouts. So I'm just thankful that I stuck to what I set out that I was gonna do. And um, you know, just 
for young fighters out there or anyone going through struggles, um, you're always going to reach speed bumps and, and have a hard road, but you just got to take it as um, take it as a strength and, and use it as uh, fuel. You know, you, you really can um, find out a lot about yourself when you're all in, uh, you know, money's tight and uh, everyone's saying that you can't do it. Use it as fuel and, and fire it and just put everything into it. In Thailand, it was, it was awesome, you know, to, to get experience and all that, but I, I was a bit complacent over there. You know, there's such a big team and, and there's only so many coaches that I, I wasn't getting the attention that I needed. And that's when I linked up with Eugene and, and um, City Kickboxing, and that's when I based myself out of New Zealand. 2016 was that when I moved to City Kickboxing. I remember Eugene saying to me, just turn up the training and the rest will take care of itself. And, and that's all I did. I just listened to him and I just turned up the training. And then um, two years later, I finally made my UFC debut. So I'm thankful that I listened to him and um, I wouldn't be here today if um, Eugene wasn't my coach. Talk to me about your evolution as a fighter. Compare your first fight in the UFC, preparation, mindset, attitude to, I guess, you're about to hit the mountain top of this title shot eliminator. What is the difference and what has helped spark the change? Um, you know, when I made my UFC debut back in December 2018, it's crazy to think it's only been, what, just over three years since that's happened, but so much has happened in my life since then. And now, I guess, from making my debut to, to being one of the top flyweights in the world, I guess having a family's really kind of given me more purpose. Um, having to provide, you know, having to be a father figure for my son and, and knowing that he's watching me and he's he's mimicking everything I'm doing. It just keeps me hungry and keeps me trying to be the best version of myself. And coming off two first round knockouts in the UFC just gives me, you know, that boost of confidence that I needed. And now you can see it, my maturity in the ring. Uh, you can see that I'm calm, I'm focused uh, and I'm present. Tapping into that um, alter ego, you know, that warrior version of myself. And that translates um, into home, you know, being the father at home and the best husband I can be, and, and then being the best fighter I can be. But yeah, that's that's just where I'm at. You know, I'm trying to be the best at home and the best in the ring, and and, it, and then it's all working out, so. Two minutes. I want to know when you knew you were good, and then also the moment that you knew that you could be a contender or champion. Um. So yeah, after my second to last fight, was in the worst position with a Brazilian. He had my back pretty much for four minutes of that first round. In my head, I'm just saying, you know, I'm fine. I can keep fighting this. I'm still breathing. I'm still present. You know, this guy's going to get tired eventually. So keep fighting the hands. You know, he was transitioning and staying on top, doing a good job of keeping the position. But then yeah, eventually he got tired. I could hear him breathing in my ear. So I was like, just get up. You know, it's just like me in the pool when we were doing the sessions with Dave. We could come up whenever we wanted. There's nothing holding us back, but it's all in us. So when I was under the water, so calm and peaceful, that's where my head was at when I was in that choke. I was just staying present, staying calm, not overthinking anything. And then uh, once we got back to our feet, I felt him um, slip off me and then I knew he was tired. So I just landed the first shot to the body. I knew it would freeze him. Once I found my range, after I hit the jab to the body, I knew the right hand was on. So I just landed the right hand, the right uppercut, and then another right hand. Uh, and then that's what dropped him. And I did the Mark Hunt walk away, so. Did you get PTSD watching Ortega versus Vol? <laughs> Definitely. Um, I knew exactly what he was going through. It's like, you have all these flashbacks and um, you have like this moment of like, everything's just stopped and you just like, just get up. Why, why am I like delaying it? Just get up. And at the same time, Volko was in that choke. I was like, he, he's gonna fight it. He won't, he'll never tap. Like I just know Volko personally and he'll, he'll go to sleep before he's tapping. So yeah, definitely um, symmetry in, in, that, um, in that moment. I feel like you have, uh, I would say, the most cut no corners, most disciplined mindset when it comes to, you know, the CKB roster, the way you train, look after yourself inside and outside the cage. What is it inside you that helps you keep yourself to that standard? It's a lot to do with my circle, I guess, like where I've come from, all my family's gone to university and uh, I'm kind of the black sheep that took the different path, obviously chasing this dream and, and it's all worked out for me, but um, that's kept me hungry and kept me kind of always pushing for more, always trying to better myself, always trying to be the best version of myself. The mindset that I've always had is um, tick all the boxes. So when it's fight week, I'm not playing what I could have should have. There's no doubt in my mind, I've ticked off everything. I've done all the trainings, all the recovery, picked from every coach that I have, you know, working with Eugene, working with Twist, working with Doug, working with Andre with wrestling, all the other coaches that I train with, Coach Sun's doing our strength and conditioning, 
David Wood doing our breathing and, and um, CO2 tolerance, as well as David Neath working uh, mindset. It's such a collective input, it's not just me in there. And then the, the last bit of it is obviously nutrition, which is Geordie, where he comes in. So like that's why I hold myself to a high standard because all these people are putting their input into me and, and putting their energy into me. You know, I have to um, make sure that I'm doing it justice and um, giving my best version. So it's a two-way street, you know? Talk to me about being an underdog, let's say in this fight and in your career as well. Do you feel like having the odds stacked against you that way or like people doubting you, does that motivate you? Does that light a fire under your ass and be like, okay, I'll show you? Oh, definitely, you know, that. that's definitely the massive motivator for me. You know, my last fight knocking out a former champ on the biggest card, or one of the biggest cards of the year in Vegas. Everyone against me, you know, going for the hometown boy. Uh, but I was here to spoil the party. Just to be in Vegas, you know, from, from what I had to come from, four months of a lockdown, you know, I didn't even have a gym to go to. I was training out of a garage at my dad's house as well as um, a small bubble that I had with a few of the teammates. That's just what we had to do. So when I was in Vegas and, and Cody saying, yeah, oh, he's got an average mindset, I've got an elite mindset. It was all just like fueling the fire. I was like, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll soon find out fight night. Like that's why I did the puka night. I wasn't going to do it, but then um, I just felt it. I was like, you're not taking me serious. You're overlooking me, but I'll give you a taste for what's to come on fight night. So that's when I did the puka night. Uh, natural reaction was just to laugh because you didn't know what it was and then shrug it off. But then I knew he, he knew that I meant business. So on fight night, I just channeled all of that. When I walked out, it doesn't matter who you are, a former champ or not. It's just me and you in there. And I, I knew what I've just come from and um, I wasn't losing that night. Okay, let's talk about the fight and the matchup. Give me your thoughts or your breakdown on what Askarov brings to this fight. Yeah, so um, Ashka, Askarov, you know, tough opponent. He's gonna be uh, bringing a new skill set and a style that I haven't really fought before, an elite wrestler. I would be naive to think that uh, the fight's not gonna end up on the ground because I know some point it will, but we've worked extensively on scrambling, getting back to our feet. And uh, you know, the beautiful thing about fighting is start standing, you know, so we're in my ballpark. Uh, but I welcome it. I want to. I want him to wrestle me. I want him to try to get me to the ground. So, so when I neutralize it and and get back up, uh, I'm putting my hands on him and and I'll find the target and um, I'll put him away. Give me your thoughts on his stand up. And do you believe that you are the more well-rounded fighter? Yeah, I haven't watched too much tape. You know, I don't. I don't really focus too much on my opponents. I let my coaches do that, and then they break down the fights. You want to focus on yourself because if opponents pull out or, or things change, you don't want to be too caught up in the game plan of just that one opponent. So. I just focus on myself, uh, but yeah, stand-up wise, uh, we see holes, we see tendencies that he does, stuff he's good at, stuff to watch out for, um, but stuff that you know, I'm not going to be scared of and, and um, yeah, I'm just going to take it to him. I, I'm going to be smart and be methodical and, and uh, wait for my time, but once once I find the target, you know, I'm just going to be a dog and get in there and, and um, try to put him away. He, he's coming off a lot of hype. Um, if, especially if you know this division uh, and where he's at and who he's fought, you know, he's fought the who's who in the top five. That's why after this fight, there's no excuse for me not to get a title shot. So no questions asked after this, um, I'm the guy and um, Figgy already calling me out. What better way? Let's bring a new UFC back to New Zealand or Australia. Um, I'd love to do that, but obviously not looking past Ash Askarov, but uh, that's how I see things happening. This hasn't been just a 10 week fight camp for this fight. It's been a 10 year fight camp. And um, now you're seeing that it's all coming together and um, I can't wait to see everyone powder over there and uh, put New Zealand on the map and rip, rip Aotearoa to the fullest. So don't blink, baby. Wish you all the best. Ciao, bro. Boom.